Hi, how are you doing today? Thank you for joining Rich TV Live. I'm here with a very special guest. It is the CEO of Premier Health Group, Isam Hamza. How are you doing, Isam? Great, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Isam, who you are, and how Premier Health Group, Inc. started? So my name is Isam Hamza. I'm a family doctor. Uh, I've been in practice over 20 years. Uh, really, um, always been interested in using technology and delivery of healthcare and use of technology to help patients and doctors make the, the interaction much more efficient. Uh, and so for the past 20 years, I've been trying to incorporate a lot of different things into my practices um, and built up a, a few different clinics in the lower mainland here and connected them and started making them uh, integrated with the same electronic medical records and uh, started using early adoption of telemedicine and, and so on. Uh, and then Premier Health, about a year ago, um, at the public company, uh, purchased the clinics and I came on as a CEO. And since then, uh, our motto is to totally disrupt the delivery of healthcare uh, in Canada and around the world uh, from something that is completely inefficient and uh, expensive and unsustainable to something that with technology can grow and, and provide better care to patients and make it much more efficient for everybody involved. That's great. Now, you mentioned it a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about the current issues with the Canadian healthcare system mm -hmm. and how Premier Health offers a solution? Sure. Actually, and it's not just the Canadian health system. I mean, the Canadian health system definitely has its own uh, unique is uh, issues, uh, but the world. I mean, the world uh, in a lot of jurisdictions is aging. And with the aging population, uh, it's uh, becoming more expensive to take care of them. And the traditional model of waiting until something happens and treating it then doesn't work really well. The traditional model of the doctor being the center of care and having less and less doctors compared to the number of patients doesn't work either. And so our motto is to change that whole dynamic and make the patient the center of their own health care, so the patient-centric care, instead of the doctor-centric care. And so uh, the, the reason for that is, you know, you hear stories all the time about uh, not enough doctors in, in Canada or in this area or yes. that area, let's produce more doctors. And the problem is not necessarily that there's not enough doctors, but there's not an, a good distribution of doctors. So some areas have too many doctors and some areas have no doctors. And the traditional model would be that a patient has to take a day off of work, you know, or drag their kids out of school, drive across town, sitting in a waiting room, after waiting two weeks for that appointment, wait in the waiting room for an hour and a half, then go into an appointment for five minutes to get a prescription that they already knew they needed or something, right? <laughs> yeah, so and it's and it's completely inefficient. And and most of the time, um, I would say probably about seventy percent of the time, we as doctors don't even touch the patient, you know. And so a lot of it can be delivered in a much more efficient way through technology, through virtual medicine and telemedicine and so on. And that's kind of the core concept. But to do that you have to empower the patient. They have to understand their own uh, health. They have to understand what medications they're taking, for what reasons, who they saw, what the results of the lab tests are, uh, what the, you know, the results of their MRIs and x-rays and so on are. And so to do that, you have to give the records to them because of privacy reasons, uh, doctors can't share records Yes. unless you get permission from the patient. So that's a very inefficient way. So often what happens is you go to one doctor, they have no clue what the other doctor did, they repeat tests, which is more expensive to the system. Or you don't, can't take time off of work and you run out of your medication, what happens? You get a diabetic complication or a stroke from hypertension, uh, or you go to emergency, which costs the system a lot more money than going to see your family doctor. And so the inefficiencies uh, and the problems with the Canadian healthcare system and so on is costing us billions of dollars uh, and it's not sustainable. And the reason that the government is encouraging and promoting the use of technology and telemedicine in the future delivery of healthcare. That's fantastic. I think you guys are doing something really, really cool here. Now, what is your app called and who is it available to? Um, so our uh, our app is called My Health Access. Uh, this is the, the current app, and the reason it's called My Health Access, uh, and it's available on Google uh, Store as well as the uh, Apple Store, Great. Uh, uh, is that when we are a health tech company, 
We're not a clinic business. We're a health tech company. And we bought a health tech company out of uh, Victoria um, earlier last year uh, that already provides electronic medical records to 3,000 doctors uh, wow. across eight provinces in Canada. And they have about 3 million patient charts in the system already. So 3 million patients have charts in our system already. Uh, and they already had a patient portal called My Health Access that we used as the, uh, the start of this app. And so that was called My Health Access, and we, we kept that name so for continuity reasons, patients would know to be able to download it. So now, in starting from, instead of starting from no patients and going direct to consumer and trying to educate patients and trying to acquire patients and, consume, and customers, we already have a, a base of 3 million patients that we can draw from. And so we released the My Health Access app uh, a couple of months ago into the store. We have over 80,000, we announced uh, over 80,000 registered users already uh, of that app. Um, Congratulations, that's no, great, that's great. You. And so the patients are able to do 24 seven online booking from home instead of trying to call Monday morning to the staff and trying to get in to make an appointment. So uh, any one of those patients can do 24 seven online booking. Uh, they can do telemedicine with one of our doctors or one of their doctors uh, on demand. And also they have the ability to do secure messaging so that we can start sending things back and forth to patients. And that's going to be another buzzword you can hear a lot about in 2020 and going forward is secure messaging because we're not supposed to be using email or text or any of those things that are unsecured to even identify you as a patient. So we have to provide security in the transmission of things. And uh, to do that, you need uh, some sort of platform that does provide that, and our app does that. So that's another reason we developed the app. Okay, great. Now, what are your current products, and how many clinics are using your technology today? Um, so with our acquisitions, we have, uh, we've made a few acquisitions. So Premier Health uh, initially bought the uh, four clinics uh, with over 120,000 uh, patients. And then, um, we purchased the Cloud Practice tech company out of Victoria, uh, and Cloud Practice had three different products, let's say. So the first product they have is called Juno, which is an Oscar-based electronic medical record. So an electronic medical record is what, is what the doctor uses when you go into the office and you're talking to your doctor and they're sitting there typing away on the computer. They're entering all that information into your electronic medical record and there's different vendors that have it. So one of the vendors is called Juno, and Juno provides electronic medical records to over 3,000 doctors, uh, about 315 clinics across the country in eight provinces, and like I said, about three million patients. They also have a second product that fully integrates again into Juno, and that's a billing software called ClinicAid, and ClinicAid does over 30 million a month in uh, billing uh, transactions for doctors' offices and allied professionals. Uh, and then the third product was the My Health Access uh, portal, which we've really developed over the past year into a full-fledged app that we just talked about uh, as well. So that's the, the three products from them. And then we also just recently acquired a company called LiveCare. And LiveCare is a pioneer, one of the very first telemedicine companies in, in Canada. Uh, over four years now. And they have provided over 27,000 telemedicine visits um, over the over those years to uh, you know a range of places but particularly the focus was remote communities and uh, indigenous uh, First Nations communities that are underserviced and so on they worked with a lot of government agencies and provincial agencies and native agencies and so on to to provide these clinics and uh, like I said they were really pioneers and then another reason we acquired them was not just that telemedicine platform they have, um, but that telemedicine platform has the ability to have all the devices attached to it. So let me explain that for a second because I think this is really important. The, when a doctor sees a patient through telemedicine, traditionally, so if you talk about teledoc or, or something like that, um, you're, you're able to see them and do a lot of things. You can do prescription refills, you can give them requisitions for lab tests, you can uh, talk to them about mental health and counsel them and so on. So there's a lot of things, right? What you can't do is you can't look in the eardrum, you can't listen to their heart, you can't listen to the lungs and so on. With the telemedicine um, application they have with LiveCare, 
they actually have these carts that they can put in remote communities or clinics or, wow. and we'll talk about this in a second with pharmacies that we're doing, where it's almost like a clinic in a box. Oh. So they're very small footprint uh, carts and they have Bluetooth stethoscopes and otoscopes and ophthalmoscopes. And so now the doctor on the other side across the country or across the world can do a full exam on that patient. Wow. They can actually see the eardrum of the, the crying kid, you know, or listen to the lungs and to see if there's pneumonia or look in the throat and so on and do almost a full exam. And so it expands that, that use case for telemedicine virtual care even further. And that's another reason we bought them. And the final reason we bought them is that they have uh, an exclusive uh, partnership with McMaster University for, I think, the future of the personalized health record. So remember I told you before, the, the reason there's issues with uh, sharing um, it, doing this is that the, the patient health record is so fractured. There's some stuff here and some stuff there. McMaster has developed a, a patient hub um, where mm. all your records, everything from vaccines to your, your visits and so on, all sit there. And not just from your doctor, it could be from your pharmacist that enters information or that, that the information gets dumped into. Uh, from your uh, chiropractor, from your counselor, and attaches a team around it, right? So now it's not just your allied professionals that are attached to it, but even your, let's say if you're an elderly patient, maybe your caregivers, you know, maybe your, your, your kids, you know, that can be part of that team. And now they can be able to share some of those um, charts so that they can provide you better care and it goes both ways. So it sends information in there so you have one unified hub and so if you think of it like a, a spoken wheel kind of thing, uh, so that's the hub. And now you have other things plugging into it. You have your Fitbits plugging into it and your health monitoring devices and you know, your, your, your cardiac specialist. So, so they have that built out and it fully integrates into the electronic medical records and the devices and so on. And so that's kind of the future of the healthcare delivery and that's one, another reason we bought LifeCare. I really like what you guys are doing. I'll give you a great example. So I'm from Toronto mm -hmm. and I hurt my back. Yeah. So I go to a doctor here no they have no clue. Right? Yeah. So I have to go back to my doctor in Toronto, get them to send the yeah. back records to here. And it's just a nightmare. It's a headache. It's, a, yeah. it's just a waste of my time. So what you're talking about is actually there's a huge need for it. 100%. And there's no one really doing it. Now, you did mention on TDOC. Yes. So TDOC, for those of you guys that are watching at home, is probably the biggest in America doing this. Probably think, in the world, yeah. In the world, yeah. So they're actually one of my picks that you guys will be hearing about. Uh, I think has a huge potential, a huge future, that company. Mm -hmm. And it's a stock that I think could do really, really well. How do you compare to them? They're like an $80 mm -hmm. stock on a senior oh, exchange sure. in America. I think yeah. you said $6 billion market cap. I think they have a $6 billion market cap. We're about 30 million Canadian. Wow. And <laughs> so, and 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 that's great. So we're, we're, not, af we're not afraid of competition we, we encourage it we do not want to be the only one in the industry in Canada and we're not and I'll explain to you in, in why in a second here but uh, it's very important that patient education happens that this is a viable way to get your healthcare delivered and that's very expensive it takes time and effort and money to educate patients and doctors and everybody that this is a great way to do it to give you an example uh, in some places in the States, uh, some insurance companies and so on that have telemedicine and virtual care, over 53% of delivery of, of uh, health care is through virtual care. Wow. In Canada, we're less than 1% right now. Oh, wow. That's so we have a long difference. way to go. I had right? no idea it was like that. Yeah, and so we have a long way to go to get to that point, and that's going to require patient education, and that's also going to require um, other people in the industry providing kind of validation and so on. So we encourage it. So we encourage the fact that Teladoc's there. They're acquiring a lot of uh, companies around the world instead of, you know, establishing their own presence in a lot of places. Um, and there's other ones as well, you know, and, you know, Babylon here in, in Canada, in, they just released, I think, in, in BC. Um, there's Maple out of an Ontario uh, that recently raised, I think, $14.5 million dollars. Uh, so there's a few different companies out there that are doing pure direct to consumer. The difference is that we already have an established base of patients. So we're not starting from zero and trying to acquire patients very expensive, you know, in a very expensive way. We have uh, three million tra patient charts already in the system that are kind of low hanging fruit 
that are able to, to come into the system right away to give us a, a base. And when we release these, this app, like I said, we already have over 80,000 uh, registered users, which is great. We are going direct consumer as well. And one more thing that, we're gonna, that we've announced and we will be uh, encouraging uh, further is that we are going to be creating these kiosks in pharmacies as well. So, right. And that's, the reason for that is that's the very big pain point uh, for patients. Most patients don't know they ran out of medication until they get to the pharmacy. They see the pharmacist actually seven to eight times a year compared to their family doctor, which is maybe three times or four times a year. And so that's usually where they have to leave the pharmacy, go across town or wait until they get an appointment or they run out before they can get the prescription, come back, if they even come back to that pharmacy. So the pharmacist lose, loses business and doesn't provide that continuity of care. The patient is inconvenienced, the doctor is inconvenienced, and everybody's uh, having worse care. So we're putting these very small footprint kiosks in these pharmacies so that we can provide on-demand you know, things that they need, like prescription refills and follow-ups and so on at the point of care there too. Great. And what type of feedback have you been getting from the new patient-centered technology, the telemedicine app? Uh, they love it. Uh, it it's, been a, it's been a life changer for a lot of people in different ways. So yes, it's convenient for sure, but it is also the future of delivery of certain types of medicine, including and especially mental health. And so it's been, it's, when I say life changer, it, I, I don't think I'm understating it. It really is something that, or overstating, sorry, it, it is something that um, has been dramatic in our practices. We've been doing telemedicine for a couple of years now in our practices, and uh, especially the younger patients, you know, the teenagers and young adults and so on, they're already anxious to begin with or depressed or whatever. The last thing they want to do is be dragged into a, a busy waiting room where they think everybody's staring at them and then waiting an hour and a half in a very uncomfortable environment and then going into a small, even smaller room and talking for, you know, five minutes quickly about something uh, that, that's bothering them and trying to get them to open up. And so it's always been a barrier for mental health with young kids and, and young adults and so on. And this has been something that's been uh, transformational. I mean, it's been something where now patients at home are more comfortable to talk to the doctors and their healthcare workers and, and, and counselors and so on. And that is going to be probably the thing that really leads telemedicine to broad adoption. And that's one thing we've been doing. The second thing that we've been testing and will be launching uh, relatively soon as part of this app is using artificial intelligence to triage the patient before the doctor gets, uh, sees them. So a lot of times when you go see your doctor and you wait that hour and a half in the waiting room and you go in and the reason they're rushed is they're already behind and then they have to ask you a bunch of questions to get to the point where they can actually help you. So it takes about 15 minutes just to find out why you're really there and what we can do for you. And then we rush on the actual solution. And so artificial intelligence has the way to ask you questions and give all that information to the doctor. So for instance, you say, I want to see the doctor. It'll ask, you know, what would you like to see the doctor for? And you'll say, I have a headache. And it'll ask you the same questions I would or my nurse would. Uh, how long have you had it for? Uh, do you have it on one side or both sides? Nausea, vomiting from one to 10, so on and so on and so on. It takes all that information, gives it to the doctor. So now the doctor has a full history. They have a differential diagnosis with about a 95% accuracy rate. And they even have like lab tests that you could run and test and um, the treatment options based on current evidence before they even said hi to you. So it saves you know, the system, even, it's even more efficient than even you know, the fact that you're drawn from doctors from far away. You're having technology now do the intake and the, and the, the nursing basically first. And so that's something else that everybody likes, the patients like it, the doctors like it, because now the doctors can spend that 10, 15 minutes on actually helping you instead of the 10, 15 minutes finding out why you're there. And so that's another reason that we, we're doing what we're doing. So Premier Health is already revenue producing, mm -hmm. which is great and honestly quite rare. Can yeah. you share with us your details and ideas of revenue figures and projections currently for 2019 and going into 2020 and beyond? Sure. I think our, our, our run rate we had uh, for 2019 was about 11.5 million. And for the end of 2020, we have about 22 million projected. We've made a lot of acquisitions, uh, you know, like we mentioned over the year uh, from the clinics to the two tech companies, to two pharmacies with national 
uh, banners uh, recently, and uh, that provides a lot of established revenue. Uh, but also, the reason we did it was that it adds, they're all synergistic things. You, you know about the clinics, you know about the tech companies we talked about already. The reason the pharmacies are important is that, again, you know, the patient and the pharmacist uh, interaction is very important. The pharmacist is part of the allied professionals, and it's not something we were expert, experts at before we purchased the, the pharmacies. And we want to provide um, kind of further convenience and compliance for patients so that patients don't run out of medications, they don't you know, get diabetic complications or strokes from you know, high blood pressure and so on. And so we have the ability now to partner with pharmacies across the country and have the prescription delivered to the patient as well after the interaction with the doctor. And so that's one more thing that we want to have uh, as part of our, our our team and our provi uh, what we provide to them. Oh, it's great because we're going into 2020 now. We're here and 2020, it's like a world where nobody wants to leave their home. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to go on the computer. They want to do their shopping on Amazon. Right. So I know you guys have some news. Did mm -hmm. you want to discuss a little bit of the news that's coming up? Yeah, no, absolutely. So you mentioned Amazon and, yes. and Amazon um, is has done, has started, everybody's kind of started putting their fingers into healthcare because healthcare, they see it as, as a very important part of the future, uh, whether it's Apple with the Apple Watches and, and, and Apple, you know, different things, um, to Google, you know, with the Google Health uh, initiatives and so on, uh, to Amazon. They bought PillPack, right? So you mentioned delivery. That's why they bought PillPack, right, is that they're going to get into the prescription delivery business re relatively soon. And then they purchased, uh, a, and then they announced something called Amazon Care, where they were providing telemedicine services to their employees, wow. uh, starting in Seattle, 24-7 you know, telemedicine services for their employees, uh, and eventually to all their employees around the world, right? So it's called Amazon Care. And why is that important? Is right after they announced Amazon Care, they purchased the company called Health Navigator. And Health Navigator was kind of the, the leading company and remember I told you about the artificial intelligence yeah. algorithm asking questions first. Yeah. Um, so they were the leading company in that space and Amazon basically said we're buying you, cancel all your other agreements. Uh, they, they were, Microsoft was even using Health Navigator for, wow. their, for their health bot and so they canceled kind of everybody else and said you're just going to work for our patients basically, our, 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 our employees. Wow. Why that's important is number one they're getting into the space and number two uh, uh, the senior uh, sales uh, VP of sales of Health Navigator uh, has just joined our team, and oh, wow. he's he's now our senior VP of sales. That's great. Cool. And he has uh, international exposure to uh, markets and a lot of experience. Uh, he's really well regarded, and he's leading uh, charge in our sales as well. So we're really comfortable with our sales projections and, and direction we're going to. Okay, great. Now, our community is a vast community of investors all over the world in over yeah. 60 countries. The majority of the people that are watching are from Canada and the United States. Those mm -hmm. are the two biggest markets. Now, one of the things that our community loves is they love to figure out your share structure. Right. It's very important when you're looking at the stock market, you know, what the shares look like, what the insiders' holdings look like. Mm -hmm. Would you mind sharing that a little bit with us? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so between uh, the insiders, uh, friends and family and the core group that kind of took this company public and so on. Uh, we have about over 40% uh, ownership of the, of the shares. Uh, we have about, I think, 81 million shares outstanding, fully diluted, I think just over 90 million. Very tight. Very uh, tight. Yeah, so it's very tight. Uh, we do between uh, just over 200,000 to 300,000 shares a day uh, right now in trading. Uh, we're listed on the CSE, but we also have the OTC uh, QB um, as well. And, and like I said, we have pretty good distribution. Uh, we expect to, uh, to do even better kind of uh, volume and distribution kind of going forward. Uh, there's going to be some major road shows that I'm, being, I'm going to starting this weekend again uh, to start getting the word out because we're now at the execution phase. We were kind of in a quiet phase before just to build the company. We built the company, we built the product, and now we're executing and we're going to have a lot of announcements on, on kind of that next execution phase that we're talking about right now. Great, and that actually leads into my next question. What's on the horizon for mm -hmm. Premier Health Group for 2020? A uh, lot of things. I mean, it's pretty exciting. I mean, there will be no shortage of, um, of things that we can start talking about now. 
Um, so, you know, we built this company on purpose so that it's, uh, it, it has a good foundation. Uh, each one of our subsidiaries and our acquisitions were made for a reason. You know, uh, they all had revenue already. They already had customers, they already had uh, a reason to be joining forces. And so it's synergistic. And so we'll be able to start announcing further things like updates on the number of registered users for our app. Uh, we're coming out with a direct consumer brand uh, soon that we'll be able to announce. Uh, and, and that way, any patient from anywhere across Canada can download it and, and start using it and so on. Uh, our initiative with uh, pharmacies and the kiosks and so on are things that we're going to be able to talk about as well and, and expand on. Um, and then a bunch of other things that, you know, partnerships and, and things that we can't really talk about yet, but are going to be exciting because, like you said, it's a, it's a very interesting space. It's a very exciting space, and uh, it's a space that we're going to go from less than 1% delivery, like we talked about, to probably over 50% delivery of virtual care in the next 10 years. And we're the only, as far as I know, the only public Canadian company a uh, publicly traded Canadian company that's doing telemedicine right now. There's a lot of private companies. There's a big U.S. company in Teladoc. Uh, but otherwise, we're the only one where a patient can be a patient and they can also be an, an investor, right, which is, I think, interesting. Very interesting. And what excites you about Premier Health's future and where it's heading? Well, partly that is that it's, it, we're right at the beginning of that, that hockey stick, you know, and it's pretty exciting. But even more so as being a doctor, I just I see this as as quite revolutionary uh, at the very beginnings of uh, a healthcare disruption that is the solution I think to a lot of the problems we have. And so adoption is going to be interesting. The 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 fact that the patients are going to be rewarded for this, that it's going to make it easier and better for doctors to provide better care, to provide team based care now where everybody's working together, not just one doctor here and one walk in clinic here, but everybody together from your counselor to your pharmacist to your naturopath to your family doctor to your specialist. They're all using the same platform and they're all circling you instead of you circling them. And so it's, it's, it's quite exciting. Yeah, well, I'm very excited to see the progression. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Isam Hamza, the CEO of Premier Health Group. I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time today. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you guys for watching.